Hey and what's up guys, welcome to a brand new video here on my YouTube channel. Uh, this is part two of the Biosphere unboxing, scaping, I call it Biosphere action. Uh, over here is the small Biosphere, which is kind of the regular size, and we decided to split up the whole process in two videos. So if you haven't seen how I scaped the small version, the regular size version, click in the up corner here, I'm gonna link the part one video up there. And in this video, I'm gonna scape the bigger Biosphere. So stay tuned for after the intro. So, right after the small biosphere, we're escaping the large biosphere over here, and this one is going to be a little more uh, yeah, detailed, I would say. So, let's switch off the light, take off the LED lid, get rid of the rubber, and get in some good tropical substrate. And by substrate, I mean, I mean soil. like how it fills in and I instantly have that beautiful slope over here. Since this is going to be a more uh, detailed layout or more detailed composition, I think I'm gonna go over to my uh, little stock of driftwood and pick up some hornwood and uh, try and make a little composition. So guys, I'm back. I got some hornwood and yeah, Maya stones for this one. And yeah, those two pieces hopefully are gonna fit inside. This is the big challenge here. Okay, this one goes inside, this is good. And this one, yep, it's gonna fit inside as well. So let me first find, yeah, I think something like this can work. So I will try to put them both inside and secure them in the substrate. And then the next one just like this okay we have a little action going on here between the two hornwood branches and yeah to secure them i got the yamaya stones I'm going to introduce them from the frog foreground and create a little bit of a terrace look So, um, we have the two, the double branch wood inside with the stones, the Amaya stones. I'm trying to create some sort of terrace look here to have, you know, help build up height in the back. So this really helps to support the soil in the back. And yeah, a little bit of action in the foreground. It's just nice to have a little detail here and there with the stones. Okay, this looks like five stones and we definitely don't want a four stone setup, so we have to use somewhere a one more. I don't know, maybe it's gonna be here, I don't know. Let's raise it up a little bit. I think now I'm gonna fill in a little bit more soil towards the back and in this pocket over here. I have this little pitcher here with soil, so I can fill in a little bit more. and move the soil up on the side so we get this nice clean look. Okay. 
Okay. I think this is looking good. The rocks are quite small. Let me, let me pull this one out. Replace with a bigger one. I mean, we want to see some of the material, right? So here, add one over there. I'm just gonna add one, another one on top. So it becomes more visible like this. Yeah, I think that's cool. So guys, the hardscape is in and we have this kind of dual action here between these two hardwood pieces. We have Yamaya stones kind of dividing the fore and mid ground. And just to show you, uh, in the foreground, I'm gonna use some Eleocaris mini together with Himian de Scuba just because they're so small, they blend together perfectly. And I have this material here already from the small biosphere. Towards the mid and background, I'm gonna use some crypts and stem plants. And in the middle, I will use some really cool Putsifalandras and hopefully, hopefully they will flower inside this biosphere. Uh, that would be my wish to, or my goal to accomplish in this biosphere. And now let's get the plants and put them inside. Uh, I have the Kuba already ready here. And this one, I'm not going to do the lazy dry start method. This one I'm gonna do properly and for this, yeah, let me get the rock wool right. I need uh, big tweezers. I mean, I need big scissors. So I'm gonna cut off the rock wool. That's how I do it. Divide it like in six little pieces, just like this. Take it a little bit apart. Cut that middle section in part as well. And now I can just easily wrap up the entire carpet of Kuba in six little portions. This looks like sushi a little bit. Who likes sushi? Comment down below. And these are super easy for planting. They go inside like this. And again here, because this is, will be dry forever, we don't have to worry about any floaters. I'm just gonna Blend this middle section completely with Kuba. Oh, I feel there is some wood action going underneath the soil, so we will have to leave a little bit of soil empty, but that's no problem. That is going to fill in when it's growing. Okay, just like this. Okay, press it down firmly so all the Kuba has lots of contact with soil. This way it will start rooting a lot quicker. This one right behind. Over here, great. One more to the back. Perfect. This green pathway is almost planted. I think I'm gonna use this one on the other side. So it kind of blends in from both sides towards the foreground. Just push it down along the glass so it grows in perfectly. Okay, so next let's take again a little bit Iliocaris Mini. Let's go. Take little portions and plant them here and there along the Humiantus Cuba so it can blend together and get this nice kind of forest look where the carpeting plants blend together perfectly. a little bit on the side here as well. A little alternation so it doesn't look, we don't have too much symmetry going on here. Here you have to be careful with the glass because it bends. If I apply too much force I will get with my scissors outside the biosphere. I don't want to. the foreground I'm just gonna gonna leave uh, empty and I will wait for the Iliocaris and Hemian to scuba to to fill in over time. We're not in a rush here. Good so we have a little mixed carpeting plant action. 
let's move it away and get to the next plants. So next I'm gonna use the Cryptocorani Albida Brown. This is a beautiful small compact size script from Tropica. Thank you Tropica for providing the plants for this biospheres. So there we have the Albida Brown. I love this script, it looks so beautiful. I think I, I want to keep it as it is, like in one big Albida Brown bush. I think this one can go right here in the middle section of the layout. To put it deep, I need my stronger tweezers. That's what these are for, for planting crypts and echinodorus and just in general, bigger plants. I can apply more force with this one. So, crypt here. I think I'm gonna use another one on the other side. start enjoying planting this biosphere. How do you guys like it so far? Take one over here. Okay, so I just pushed the soil too much, but no problem, I can push it back with my hands. We have it here. And this albeda brown is going towards the middle here together with the Iliocaris mini. So, okay. I like it. A little albeda brown forest. Next is Hydrocotyl verticillata. Wow, that is a beautiful plant. Some beautiful runners actually already comes with little white flowers. You can have a look on them over here. The cool thing about the hydrocotyl, it grows with this little mushroom like leaves along the runners. So I don't need a lot of it and it will hopefully spread all over the place and yeah, make it look like a little Pandora forest or something small magical mushrooms just look super cute yeah let's put some in the back over here and some more on the other side Just firmly cleaning off the rock wool from these. Since this one is not going to be flooded with water, it's less of a problem. Okay. But as always, try to get rid of as much rock wool as possible. We just don't have to be, just don't have to make it perfect here. It's really difficult, guys, to plant inside the biosphere, very close to the glass because of the bend. You don't get really deep. Yeah, and then you push against the glass. So I can recreate the slope, put the Himianthus Cuba back in place. Okay, um, I think we're cool to go with the foreground, the midground. Uh, I need now something for the background here. So for the background, I'm gonna use red Ludwiga palustris. And this one does super well and the dry start is just way too big to be used here um, as it is. So what I'm gonna do is a little bit brutal. I'm gonna just cut it off just like this. I know it hurts. <sighs> I feel you guys. But this is what I need. This bottom section with the roots, that's all I need. By the way, this can be used as well. You know, just make some, you know, take it two or three stems and then you can plant it. But since I got the full pot, I'm gonna use the bottom section here. Uh, get clean the rock wool. For this, I'm using the sharp tweezers. 
just brush out the rock wool like this if you would brush your hair hopefully your hair doesn't look like this cleaned off the rock wool uh, gonna divide it in little portions here because if you plant too many at the same time it can be a little bit too dense and then the plants eventually might rot uh, you don't want this to happen so make little portions and plant it into the background so lots of Ludwigia palustris goes into the background of this biosphere XL it's kind of really difficult to plant because of the bend this is why I love rectangular tanks you don't have to plant around the corner if you want to plant something you just do it Maybe one more in the middle. This is good. Yep. A lot of Ludwig Apollo's trees in the back. I like it. It's compact. It has lots of contact with the soil. Can branch out perfectly. Yeah, we're almost done with the biosphere. Uh, the last plants that will go inside are some Bucifalandras. Let's see what we have here. So I'm using two Bussy Falandras. I will create a little mess here in my working station. This is the wavy green. This one is quite small, but hopefully it will grow big in the tank. Okay, I'm gonna keep it like this for a moment. This is the species red. Let's help it get out of the rock wool. We don't need the rock wool in the tank. Okay. Use the tweezers to brush off the rock wool. Same with the wavy green, just brush it out. Get rid of that rock wool. If you want to get rid of the very last remaining pieces of rock wool, just wash it under your tap with a lot of water. Now let's take the tweezers and see where we are going to put in the Bucifalandra. I think one can go down here in between the rocks and one up here in between the driftwood. So I would say the wavy green because it has a tendency to be a little bit bigger than the species red, I'm gonna put down here and the species red right above it. I think I have to use the big tweezers to get the roots deep into the soil so they can take up moisture from there and pick up some nutrients. Oh my god, I love how it looks like. Just look at this. It fits into this gap perfectly. Hopefully it's going to flower. That would be amazing. Guys, what do you think? Is the, are these pussy philandras going to flower in this biosphere? Comment down below, let me know. And a couple months we're gonna find out when we do a review on it. I'm gonna cheat and move the drift with a little bit to the side. is red in the place and I think I think I'm done I don't want any more carpeting plants in the back because the palustris is going to spread out it's not going to grow very tall in this immersed setup however I'm a little bit worried because the driftwood is kind of blocking the light we can try it out and see uh, how the original biosphere light is going to make this setup look like okay yeah and then that's the case yeah we, we get some good light on this side in the middle as well this one over here has a tendency to be a little bit blocked so we'll have to see how it's going to be yeah now we have to water the plants a little bit I'm gonna try to do it through the large ventilation holes or slightly lift up the light and give them like a good spray with water you don't want too much water 
just the soil to be soaked and wet and the humidity will be enough for the plants. The initial spray is the most important one. Just need some humidity in here so the plants get enough water to transport the nutrients from the soil into the leaves to perform the photosynthesis. So I got here a moss, uh, this is the Vesicularia furry weeping, weeping moss and yeah, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit moss inside of the biosphere so it can grow everywhere for that really wild look and yeah, I'm gonna do it in the same way I did the lazy dry start. So I'm gonna take just a little portion of the moss, that should be enough. Let's put everything else back into the box, seal it so it doesn't dry out. This one, how we put it inside, I think a little container might be helpful here. Again, it's good that we're in the kitchen area. So, taking the scissors and just cutting the moss in small pieces. I don't know, like two, three millimeters, five millimeters, really small pieces. Mix it a little bit, you know, like olive oil, the salt, the pepper, all the herbs. Oh, gonna taste so good. Oh no, it's not the cooking channel, sorry. Okay, got the weeping, weeping pesto. So we take this and we just sprinkle it all around the place. Easy as that. Just sprinkle the moss over the scape. And because it's a dry start, it's gonna be permanent dry start, that moss is simply gonna work. So, the planting is completed after the little weeping sprinkle, the weeping herbs on top of the layout. Uh, I'm very happy with my first large biosphere. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really curious to know how it's going to develop. I just have closed the lids uh, of this uh, light tuning over here uh, so I can keep the humidity inside and the plants do not dry out. So the maintenance routine from today on is going to be to observe the biosphere on a daily basis several times a day just to see if the plants are doing right, if the humidity is good, maybe give them a little spray once a day, maybe twice a day. I'm not sure, I don't have enough experience with the biosphere. The guys say literally because it's closed, it should be good to go without any spraying, but I know from my own experience when I do the aquatic plants, when they adapt to the immerse, I mean, they're coming from the nursery, they are used to be in very high humidity, so just to make for them the transition as easy as possible, I might give them a little spray every day, but just a little spray. You don't want the water level to rise in the soil, you want it just to be wet so they can pick up the moisture. And that's basically it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little biosphere adventure. If you did, show it with a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And yeah, without any further ado, I say cheers, goodbye, gonna see you in the next one.